Hello students. Today, uh, let's learn about pharmacotherapy of cough. Cough is a normal reflex we all know. When there is any foreign body in our throat or if we have any lung diseases, any other infections, we will get cough. So I'm Dr. Sindhu from Department of Pharmacology. So uh, what is cough? Cough is a protective reflex and symptoms of mainly respiratory disease. It is usually associated with the respiratory infections, mainly viral or bacterial. It is a protective reflex mechanism in response to foreign material and it removes the foreign material present in the throat or excess mucus secretions from bronchi and bronchioles. The cough may also occur due to drugs. For an example, captopril, which are ACE inhibitors, they are used in treatment of hypertension. In long-term use of these captopril tablets, the person may develop cough. Once when you stop this uh, giving of this ACE inhibitor, captopril or uh, enalapril, then the cough will also suppress. That is one of the reasons for the cough due to drugs. And uh, there are two types of coughs. We have a productive cough, which is also called as wet cough. Another one is non-productive cough, which is also called as dry cough. So productive cough, uh, it produces mucus secretions that help in expulsion of exudate, transudates, and other harmful material from our respiratory passage. When what is productive cough? When you get mucus secretions from your lungs or any other respiratory tract passage, uh, it is a mixture of exudate and transudates. That mucus secretion, if it is produced uh, during the cough, it is called as productive cough. And the, if there are no secretions, only cough, it is called as non-productive or dry cough. And uh, the, the treatment of cough is treated by treating the cause of the cough, including avoidance of precipitating factors like smoke. And few people, they may have allergic cough also. Uh, in that in such uh, conditions, we have to treat the allergies instead, not just the cough. If you're treating the allergies, the automatically the cough will suppress in such conditions. <coughs> so uh, I have just gave the brief, uh, this is the brief chart for how to assess what type of cough it is. So we have uh, dry cough, wet cough, I mean the productive cough. And uh, what are the warning signs if you have dry cough, age above 65 years, if the cough is more than two weeks, deterioration under any cardiac diseases and uh, cough with fever of more than three days, nighttime fever, if they have any repeated nighttime fever, chest pain, and any abnormal lung sounds. What are abnormal lung sounds? Like wheeze or rails, okay? That is uh, for the dry cough. And next we have for productive cough. Even the signs of the productive cough are also same. Just that we have hemoptoises. What is hemoptoises? Present of blood in the mucus secretions. If a person is coughing and he gets blood in that mucus secretion, that is hemoptoises. Okay. So you can like x-ray or uh, any other images you can take if x-ray is normal and all that is all you will be learning with um, general medicine pathology and all okay so this is how in brief how to explain the character of a cough <clears throat> so moving on with the drugs which are used in cough so they are classified into different types like antitussives, expectorants, and mucolytics. What are antitussives? Antitussives, they are uh, again of two subtypes, centrally acting and peripherally acting. In centrally acting, we have opioid mechanism and non-opioid mechanism. So in opioid mechanism, we have codeine, folcodine, ethyl morphine, levo, propoxyphen. And then in non-codeine mechanism, we have dextromethorphan, noscapine, carbidopentane, and oxaladine. Okay. And then next coming to peripherally acting drugs. Peripherally acting, we have two. Uh, these peripherally acting are nothing but uh, simple home remedies, which we follow. 
So it is like pharyngeal demulsions. Pharyngeal demulsions are nothing but lozenges. Lozenges means like strep cells of cough cells like that. And then next we have steam inhalation. Either plain water steam inhalation or uh, inhalation along with menthol or eucalyptus oil can be relieving for the patient. And then next we have got the expectorants. In expectorants we have directly acting indirectly acting and acting both by direct as well as indirect. Indirectly acting, we have guaifenesis, guaicol, sodium citrate or acetate, potassium citrate or acetate. And again, in indirectly acting, we have ammonium chloride, carbonate and ipecac conha. Next, we have uh, acting by both direct as well as indirect. In direct as well as indirect, we have potassium iodide. These are the expectorants. And next we have got the mucolytics. What do we have in mucolytics? It is bromohexine, carbocysteine, acetylcysteine, and methylcysteine. These are the few mucolytes. So this is the classification of the drugs which are used in cough. So let's go in detail about the different drugs. So what are centrally acting antitussives? These drugs, which, these are the drugs which suppre, uh, suppress the cough center. They are called as antitussives. They suppress the non-productive and dry cough. Most of the opioid analgesics produce antitussive actions in non-analgesic doses and are more effective antitussives. They either act by opioid mechanism or non-opioid mechanism. So the opioids with high ratio for antitussive action are used as antitussives. Like uh, what this point means, like opioid has analgesic action, also antitussive action. The drugs which have high antitussive action when compared to the analgesic action, only they are used as antitussive drugs. If they are high for analgesic action, they are not used, okay? Uh, then here we have got the opioid mechanism and non-opioid mechanism. What happens in opioid mechanism? They suppress the cough center in doses below the analgesic doses. Means uh, this action is uh, acted by naloxone, which is an antagonist of opioid analgesic. And coming to non-opioid mechanism, they just act through their way where they does not involve the naloxone. So coming to codeine. Codeine is also called as methyl morphine. Uh, it acts by opioid mechanism and its antitussive dose is lower than analgesic dose. Uh, what are the, uh, like if you're using codeine in high doses, we get uh, constipation, sedation and respiratory depression. As it causes respiratory depression, it should be avoided in bronchial asthma patients. Abuse potential is low. So what is abuse potential here? Abuse potential means uh, drugs like morphine, codeine, all these opioids, they have addictive property of nature. So this abuse potential is low in codeine when compared to other drugs like morphine and nondol. Okay, so the abuse potential of codeine is low, but it can still be addictive. So that's why these days the codeine production has been stopped or decreased. Okay, so next coming to dextromethorphan. What is dextromethorphan? Yeah, it is non-opioid mechanism. So it raises threshold for coughing by acting centrally. It does not act on opioid receptors. The duration of this dextromethorphan is six hours. And if you are giving overdose of this dextromethorphan, it may cause CNS depression. Next, coming to car carbidopentane and carafmifen. These both binds at the same dextromethorphan binding sites and produce the antitussive action. Okay, like uh, you have learned about the receptors and all now. So these uh, dextromethorphan binding sites and all related to the receptors. Okay, the same receptor where dextromethorphan is binding, uh, these carbapentane and caramifen binds on the same binding sites. So this is codeine, okay? Uh, I'm just showing the pictures of codeine uh, cough syrup. Uh, it is uh, combined with chlorpheniramine malleate, which is a 
common uh, anti drug commonly used for cough okay so next coming to noscapine it produces antitussive action and at higher doses it may produce bron bronchoconstriction and hypotension due to histamine release and next we have falcodine it is similar to noscapine and as effective as codeine it is long acting and it is used as it is longer acting it is used only once in a day sometimes it can be used twice also when the cough is so much so coming to clofendiol it acts by central action the onset is slow but has long duration of action and it may cause dryness of mouth the side effect of clofendiol is causing dryness of mouth after that we have pharyngeal demulsions uh pharyngeal demulsions are the agents which coat the pharynx and they produce the soothing effects like um uh what we say i told you demulsions are nothing but the uh, lozenges or uh, cough syls like uh, cough syl or strep syls what happens when you are taking strep syl if you have itchy throat and you take strep syls the itchiness of the throat will be decreased so that is what the demulsions action is they coat the pharynx and they produce the soothing effects thus they prevent or suppress the cough if the origin of cough is above the larynx only if the cough is uh, above the level of the larynx then it will be suppressed with pharyngeal demulsions if the cough is coming from the respiratory system i mean lungs or bronchi then Uh, these pharyngeal demulsions does not suppress the cough or they do not treat so what happens only above the larynx they are suppress the cough so they reduce the frequency and severity of the cough but they does not reduce the complete cough okay you have to remember they reduce only the frequency and severity of the cough and this uh, these pharyngeal demulsions they, they can also be used along with antitussives if there is any uh underlying lung conditions then we can give antitussives and also pharyngeal demulsions this is a uh, strep cell okay i'm just showing the image that is soothing effective relief for sore throats and cough this is cough cells another one okay so coming to expectorants so what are expectorants they increase the bronchial secretion by direct as well as indirect mechanism so most of the indirectly acting agents are emetics and in subemetic doses they cause gastric irritation that reflexly increases bronchial secretion through vagus nerve they may be used in productive cough however they have only placebo value means uh, they are only acting as a placebo but they are not decreasing the actual efficacy okay so thus their actual efficacy against uh, pathological cough is doubtful that is not clear what happens they only decrease the production of cough but they does not treat the underlying disease for cough okay and uh, in this expectorants of all drugs only guanfenicin has been accepted by fda so all the drugs which we are using should have been should be uh, approved by fda so us fda they have accepted only guanfenicin sorry guanfenicin and all other expectorants have been withdrawn so that is regarding the expectorants and uh, these are the few cough syrups where we are using the expectorants like uh, guanfenicin okay <clears throat> uh here we have salbutamol ambroxyl hydrochloride guanfenicin in one syrup okay they have bronchodilators and mucolytics and another we have dextromethorphans hydrobromide phenylephrine hydrochloride and chlorpheniramine maleate syrup these are the syrups which we use most commonly so next we have mucolytics so uh, what are the mucolytics these mucolytics uh, they break down the uh, cough uh, means uh, the mucus plug um yeah so mucolytics such as carbocysteine acetylcysteine and methylcysteine they reduce the viscosity of the sputum by opening the disulfide bonds present in mucus so what are the uh, like 
once these uh, di disulfide bonds are broken down, what happens? The thick mucus will be turned down into watery mucus. And once it is turned on into watery mucus, it is easily uh, expected out, okay? So that is the action of mucolytics. They break, break down the disulfide bonds and they turn the viscosity of the tenacious sputum into watery sputum, okay? So what are the drugs in them? It is bromohexene. Uh, it is a derivative of alkaloid was seen uh, from Arathoda vasia vasica so this adathoda vasica uh, actually the researchers have been going on like it is an ayurvedic medicine which is used to suppress the cough in covid 19 and all but it is not completely proven but what does adathoda do it decreases the cough like it acts as a mucolytic agent so the bromohexin is a der derivative of that alkaloid vasine that is adathoda vasica they act differently and what happens it depolymerizes the mucopolysaccharides by releasing lysosomal enzymes as well as by direct action uh, it also has the uh, pro it also produces mucokinetic action okay and then next coming to ambroxyl ambroxyl is a metabolite of bromohexene having the same properties as bromohexene like it has mucolytic action and other side, same, uh, same side effects as bromohexene. And their common side effects are rhinorrhea, gastric irritation, and allergic reactions, including the skin rashes. Okay. Uh, so these mucolytics should be used only if there is a problem with mucus plug. Like in emphysema, cystic fibrosis, tracheostomies, what happens? The mucus plug, they may obstruct the respiratory tract. In such cases, only we have to use the mucolytics. Okay, not in all other cases. So, this is the N acetyl cysteine tablets. <clears throat> these are the N acetyl cysteine tablets, which is used in muco mucolytic process. Whereas, this bromohexin and ambroxyl, they are different from those mucolytics. They does not come under uh, the same category. Okay. They are mucolytics, but they are different from these acetylcysteine and methylcysteine. Like this drug has got the uh, <clears throat> ambroxyl guanifenesis, where ambroxyl is mucolytic guanifenesis is. Yes, it is a expectorant, okay? So these are the n acetylcysteine tablets and uh, which are used as a mucolytics. And I think... Uh, you have understood the pharmacotherapy of cough. If any doubts, you kindly leave a comment or you can ping me personally. Uh, it is a very small topic, I know. Hope you understood. Thank you. Have a good day.